Hi, so today I'll be taking you through the process that I plan on using to install Gen2 Linux on my desktop PC right here that's currently running Windows 10. Um, I plan to do this using uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, I thought it would be an interesting project. So this was made possible recently by work that Microsoft has been doing to um, uh, allow um, uh, mounting of ext4 file systems into WSL. Uh, now this isn't actually in the current stable version of Windows, uh, which my computer was currently on, uh, 20H2, but you do need to upgrade to the to the unstable um, latest version uh, using the Windows Insider program. So we can jump over to our settings here. Now before uh, you do this, it's going to ask you to go to your privacy settings. And you'll see this if you go there first, it'll link you here. You need to go into your diagnostic and feedback and enable optional diagnostic data. I don't know how many of you actually have that on in the first place, but it needs to be on for this, sadly. Uh, so that is on. And now we can look for Insider. Now you'll also have to link your Microsoft account. Unfortunately, I did not have this already, and I'm going to be removing it after I'm done this. Um, but it does need to be on while you have the insider preview. Uh, so then you're gonna, it's gonna take you through a couple steps. You're gonna have to accept um, their privacy policy and some terms of service. And then, although on the website, it says that it is currently in the preview build, I found it was not actually there, nor in the beta channel. It's only uh, working, I can only get the, the current build that includes this feature in dev channel which is the most unstable version, so do this at your own risk, uh, but I will be doing it today. So while editing this video, I just really wanted to make sure to stress this word of warning, is that while on, even though on the beta channel and the um, release preview channel, you can revert back to the stable windows when the next release comes out, if you're going on to the dev channel like I do in this video, you cannot revert it, and the only way to go back to stable is reinstalling windows from scratch. After that is all said and done, we can jump to windows update. And then you'll see uh, update to as long as you see uh, build greater than 20,211, which I'm currently going uh, at the time of recording. This is 21359, and I will come back once this is done installing. Hey, so I'm back from that update, and yeah, it looks like we're on the latest version, the dev version of um, Windows 10. So now we can go to... I'm popping in one more time here in post just to say what I was doing is disabling the optional diagnostic data. I didn't read the text at the time, but it means that Microsoft will no longer send builds to my system, so this is a terrible idea. I went back and turned it back on. You don't want to be stuck on an old uh, dev version of Windows forever, essentially. Now there's a couple things here uh, that I noticed that are pretty interesting. Um, Notepad has a new uh, icon. Also apparently updating Windows makes them think that I want to use Edge again. Yeah, no. So while trying to work on this, one thing that I found out is it's not actually possible to mount um, ext4 partitions that are on the same disk drive that your Windows um, install is in the EFI boot partition. So as I read from here, uh, because the disk is actually unmounted and removed from Windows and then reattached as a block device into WSL, so technically, you do need two drives to do this, which luckily I do have. So, kind of a wonky setup here. I have my uh, Windows here and C drive, and then I have 20 gigabytes set aside on here for um, Endeavor OS. Uh, I was planning on filling that location, but that's fine. I can use my D drive. And let's just shrink that. So, say we'll give it 100 gigs. So, one, three, four. There. Great. So now the next part is actually not really possible on Windows because you cannot create um, ext4 partitions uh, using WSL. It doesn't have the um, raw disk access that we need. So I'm going to jump over to this Arch partition here, um, Endeavor. And uh, you can do this with a, um, a live CD or uh, like on a USB or you can even use the Gen 2 um, uh, live uh, uh, image, 
at that point, really, there's no point in doing this with WSL, but um, I'm just having fun with it. So now over in Linux land, um, we're looking at Endeavor OS, and I can I reread over the uh, handbook just to remind myself how to use that F disk again. So if we uh, use lsblk to list block devices, we can see uh, SDB is my D drive from Windows, so that's the one we want. So to, we're going to use uh, sudo fdisk dev stb. Uh, okay, and now we can hit P to print out the current partition, so we have two. Um, and so we want to create a new one, the command is n. Uh, what do I, what number? Three, yep, yeah, that's sequential order. <laughs> Uh, and then it will automatically pick the, uh, for the starting, the, for the start of the partition, it will pick the end of the previous. So I'm just going to hit enter, yes. And it will pick the, the correct ending position for the end of the disk, for, in my case. So, yep. Yeah. And so that is done. If I hit P, it's there. And we can hit W to write it. Oh, yeah. And one more quick thing. I forgot we need to actually format that uh, partition. So to so make uh, fs.ext4 and dev sdb3 it was. Uh, and that is done, created. Hit enter, done. Now I think we can do, I'm hoping we can do everything else on Windows to install Gen2. Now that that's all said and done, uh, we now can mount that new partition into uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. So let us open a command prompt. This needs to be as administrator, so make sure you hit run as administrator. And there is a command in Windows WMIC disk drive. I have it written down, list brief, like such. And this shows my two disks. Uh, I don't know why it says two partitions there, because it should be three, but we'll see if th this works. So the command is WSL, WSL um, mount the device ID. And another flag for partition. And we give it the partition number, which was three. Successful. Great. I do want to mention, I do recommend install, when you're installing Gen 2, you should probably have a um, swap partition because when using Portage, uh, if when you're building a lot of uh, big packages that can get out of hand really quickly and you don't want your operating systems to start killing processes, but this is really just the quick and dirty way of doing it. So now that that is done, we can go into uh, my WSL here. Actually, yeah. Uh, and then CD mount, and it should be here. Yeah, so it, in, the, in I don't know if I read it out, but in the last uh, screen it said it was mounted under mount slash WSL. So we can go in there, and it shows here my partition, CD drive. And now we have that empty ext4 partition working here, and now I can install Gen2 the same way I would uh, with any other operating system. I mean, because WSL works just like anything else. Uh, so I'm going to now go through the uh, Gen2 handbook, and if there's anything along there that strays off the path of what is explained, I will stop and take a video to explain what's being done. Um, so yeah, everything up to preparing the disks is what we did on the on Linux already over on Endeavor OS. So I'm starting from here, and I'm going to read through, and I will see you when I'm done. Hey, so while working on this, I did actually find a great website um, on the Gen2 wiki that has several suggestions um, under this section, installation instructions, if you're not using um, their live CD image. Um, and I've just run into one of them. So when you're extracting um, the um, stage three tarball, uh, you should be using these specific flags, which were not uh, suggested previously. So as simple as typing them in and instead of using um, slash mount slash gen2 our uh, mount point for the gen2 partitions right here so we're just going to hit dot 
And then there's also uh, other suggestions also when you're um, uh, when you're mounting your processes directory that you should be using the uh, bind option as well as using shared memory because um, WSL at least I'm using Ubuntu um, and the way they set up the shared memory is, is um, using a uh, symbolic link so you do need a, an extra command here and that's also noted I noticed here in like the regular handbook um, with those options. Uh, now I'm going to go back to installing Gentoo. Hey guys, so I think everything's done now. Um, I've booted into LXQT using OpenBox, and uh, here's the obligatory NeoFetch in my system. It's working. Um, I'm not. I wasn't able to show the boot. Pro like I don't have a login manager yet. I was not able to show the boot process because I don't have an external uh, screen recorder. I'm using good old simple screen recorder. Um, but uh, I didn't need any crazy kernel parameters. I just obviously included NTFS because I'm dual booting, so I want to be able to access my Windows partition. Um, one thing that couldn't be done under Windows, unfortunately, so I had to go back over to Endeavor OS, was I couldn't create the EFI boot stubs for um, for for uh, Gentoo for this partition. Uh, something about WSL is missing a kernel module to be able to uh, perform those operations. If anyone knows how to do that, please let me know. But no, I had to um, switch over to uh, Endeavor to get that done. Um, this is a pretty useless project, to be honest. I was just interested in using uh, WSL's new feature of um, mounting uh, partitions, uh, ext4 partitions. I thought it would be a cool way to um, make use of that. Um, well, thanks for watching, that's all. Uh, and I'll see you next time.